Today, we're gonna to set up the Rodecaster video for a video podcast setup, including using the auto switching feature so you can run your podcast entirely hands-free. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. First, I wanna thank Rode for sending out the Rodecaster video for me to share with you on my channel. If you're not yet familiar with the Rodecaster video, I'll leave a link down below to some other videos I've done about it. So let's start with a quick overview of what I've got set up here. This is the Rodecaster video, and I've already got four video sources connected in here. They're actually being played back from a little HDMI player back there. So I'll show you what I'm looking at on my screen here. This is the multi-view output of the Rodecaster. So you can see all the different camera sources that are plugged into it. This is a recording of a video podcast that I filmed, actually, I think it was last year. It's been a long time, but this was a simple, relatively simple two person podcast setup. There's a wide angle plugged into input one. There's a close up camera on me on camera two. There's a close up of Lily on camera three, and there's a computer screen being shared in as well. I've also already gone ahead and created a separate layout in scene A, which is this sort of side by side with both of the close up shots framed around the computer screen so that when we're sharing things on the screen, I can actually show a close up of what we're talking about. So again, this is a relatively straightforward two person podcast setup. Now the trick that makes the auto switching work is you need to bring in your two different microphones as individual sources into the Rodecaster video. There's a couple different ways you can do this. The simple, most obvious way is to use the two XLR microphone jacks on the back. You can plug in two microphones, one in, in each of the XLRs, and then you have two channels of audio available. Another option is you can actually use the Rode Wireless Pros as wireless microphones paired directly into the Rodecaster video. For this, you would just go into the audio menu here, scroll over to wireless, and then you can pair a, a microphone in directly. Another option that works is you can run your microphones into the cameras and then grab the camera audio into the Rodecaster itself. For any of these, you'll want to go into the Rodecaster audio menu here and make sure that you've turned on the audio channels that you want to enable. So here I can go and add or remove channels and I can choose whether I want to use the combo jacks or the wireless mics, or if I want to bring in audio from any of the HDMI sources. So here I've got audio from the two combo jacks and I've also got the wireless mics. So now let's hop over to Rode Central to actually go and set this up. Rode Central is the app that you can use to configure more of the options on the Rodecaster. There's some settings in here that are either hard to get to or not available on the touchscreen itself. And this is often just a lot faster to configure some of these. So in particular, um, make sure your audio is set up right first. You can do this on the Rodecaster like I just showed you here, but I find it's a little bit easier to do it in the software as well. So here you can just go and quickly see what channels you've configured and you can make sure your audio levels are set right and whether you've got any effects and things like that. So for this test, I'll be bringing in audio from the two XLR jacks. And that's because I've actually got the audio from this recording piped into two separate quarter inch jacks from the HDMI player I'm using. Once you've got your audio channels configured, go back into the Rode Central home screen and click on auto switching. This is where you can configure the audio mapping for mapping audio channels to camera angles. Now there's a couple options you need to set, but it's actually not that complicated and it mostly just works. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose which of your camera angles and scenes you want to auto switch between and then assign audio channels into those scenes. So let's go take a look at the Rodecaster video again. And I'm actually gonna now turn off the wireless microphones that are paired because I don't wanna confuse things here. So I'm just gonna give these a quick turn off, power off, and now you can see that there's only audio being brought in through combo one and combo two. So in the auto switching software, what I need to do is tell the software which of the microphones are present in which of the camera angles. So you can see that I'm visible in camera one and camera two, and Lily is visible in camera one and camera three. So popping over to the software really quick, I'm going to go to camera one and I'm gonna say auto switching is turned on for this. We're gonna go to audio links and we're gonna say that we're both in this. So I'm gonna put combo one and two in this scene. Because again, both of us are visible in the camera one angle. So now for camera two, that's where you can see me. So I'll go back to the the auto switching tab here, click on input two, and I'm gonna link this to combo one, which is my audio. And then for input three, which is with only Lily visible, we will switch her over to camera three, turn this on and link to combo two where her audio is coming in. So I should also explain this priority. This is basically telling the roadcaster which of the shots you want it to show on the screen for more time. So for this, I'm gonna use the two close-up shots. I'm gonna set both of these to high priority, and then I'm gonna set the wide shot to medium priority. And then that should, at least in theory, it should mean that it spends more time on the close-up shots when there's audio from one of those and less time on the wide shot. So with this in place, we're ready to actually try it out. So let me go back to this view and we're going to turn it on. So to enable auto switching, you're gonna actually hold down for two seconds on the auto button until it turns blue. So now you can see it's turned blue and the auto switching is now active. So now that auto is turned on, it is now auto switching between angles. It's monitoring the audio levels of both of the two inputs that we've configured, and it's doing these cuts automatically by itself. 
So as soon as I start talking, it's gonna cut to a close up of me. And if Lily starts talking, interrupts me, it's gonna go and cut back to her. Or if both of us are talking, it should cut to the wide shot. And now I can just let this run. It's just gonna be a podcast. I should also mention what happens if you want to interject. So if you do wanna interject and interrupt what it's doing and, and force it to a certain angle, you can actually just tap on one of these inputs. So if I wanna, for example, show the screen, the computer screen that we're looking at, I can just go ahead and tap four. And now notice that that auto light turned white. So auto switching is now off. So I've taken over completely and now I'm switching. And if I wanna let it take over again, I just have to hold this down for two seconds and it'll turn blue and now auto switching is back on. And you can see it already did a cut to that close up. So that's really all there is to it. Again, the most important thing is to make sure that you've brought in the two different audio sources, two or more audio sources that you want to auto switch from as separate individual channels into the Rodecaster. So that could be through the combo jacks with XLR mics. It could be for wireless mics paired directly to the Rodecaster, or it could even be audio from your cameras. And this does also work with more than two angles. If you happen to have more individual audio sources enabled in the Rodecaster, you can configure even more scenes to auto switch between. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.